Today we're going to be going over a one-round rookie mock draft. This one's going to be one QB sent in from a subscriber. You know how we like to do it. When we receive a mock draft, we cover it. We go over the picks. We go over the values. We talk ball on the players. And we do this as often as we can. And we'll do it hot and heavy through draft season. That's why you're going to need to click that subscribe button right now. Because as draft season gets hot and heavy, we're going to get hot and heavier covering these prospects every single day. Ranking these prospects every single day. Mock drafts almost every single day. It's all right here helping you get ready for your rookie drafts. Helping you get ready for the NFL draft and everything else this offseason. Click that button. Stop missing out. But let's look at this 1QB rookie mock draft. One of the early ones. And we did one. About a week or so ago, take a look at that one. It was super flex. Remember, this one's sent in by a subscriber. I'm going to talk ball on these players. But the 101, Marvin Harrison Jr., he is the B. John Robinson of this class when you look at the skilled players here. And people has been waiting for him to come out for quite a bit. He's a highlight reel every single week. You check Twitter, Ohio State's playing. There's going to be a catch that Marvin Harrison Jr. made. And we've covered him on the channel extensively throughout the years. We covered his high school tape. And he is very nuanced coming out of high school. He's a hard worker. He thought he was slow. And he decided to just put the sled on, throw some weights on, and keep sprinting and sprinting and sprinting. Dude's got some dog in him, wants to get better, wants to be elite. We've seen him get better even throughout the years. No matter how good we thought he was, he comes back the next season and gets better. He was considered a tremendous prospect coming out of high school. Five-star recruit, looked good. His tape was ahead of schedule when it comes to route running and development and really turned it on over the years. He should develop and transition nicely to the NFL level. At the 102, Brock Bowers still here. Good size of just the athlete. Had some injuries here in 2022, but still productive. 10 100-yard games on his career and is in the tight end spot where you're looking for those tight ends to be a key component to your fantasy team where you can buoy some top-level production and set yourself off with an advantage. You're looking at that with Brock Bowers. He's been productive off the rip here in Georgia in 2021 as a freshman. Early breakout age, 882 receiving yards, caught 56 balls, took college football over by storm, highlight real player, explosive, can get downfield, fun guy to watch, will be a first rounder, will be a first rounder in rookie drafts, and his price is going to be sky high. Because people have been talking him up since he's been a freshman. Malik Neighbors is one of my favorite wide receivers in this stacked wide receiver class. This wide receiver class is super stacked. And I'm going to invest heavy in the wide receiver position this year. And I like Neighbors. One of my favorite wide receivers. I got him up there. I don't have the wide receiver ranking set in stone yet. But you know they're coming. You know it's coming on the channel, and you need to subscribe because of that, because we're going to go over the rankings multiple times a week here. But he's also one of those players who can take over a game, just go off, be the key component to LSU's offense, make plays downfield. He has 11 100-yard games on his career, 1,200 yards already in 2023, and 10 touchdowns. One of the best wide receivers in the country. He can separate. He's got ball skills. Another LSU wide receiver going to the league. At the 104, they drafted Mika Buka, And he's all over the place in the first round. And the reason why he's not falling to the second round in a lot of drafts is because the running back position is pretty sus. And 2023 isn't great for him however the quarterback position hasn't been lights out like last year they don't have cj stroud anymore so the targets aren't booing his production but when you watch him on the field you see a slick wide receiver you see a wide receiver and get you yards after the catch you see a wide receiver who can produce in big moments he's been there producing at ohio state in 2022 74 balls caught 1100 yards double digit touchdowns 
five-star recruit, had a schedule coming out of high school when it comes to his development, a guy you can plug and play, kind of underrated in some parts of the draft community and kind of overrated in other parts because a lot of people have questions on him and a lot of people love him. He's a wide receiver that's in this tremendous wide receiver class that's going to be floating around the spectrum here. And once draft day hits, we're going to get a better feel of where we should pull the trigger on him in our dynasty rookie drafts. I feel like this might be a little high right now at the 104. Maybe 106 to 110 range feels a little more likely, especially in one QB leagues. However, this is a good wide receiver class, and this class is so good that you can put them in a bag, just shake them up, those top five guys or so, and I feel like you can't argue them, except for Marvin Harrison Jr. He should be the top guy. Trevion Henderson. This guy is a bolt of lightning once he sees open field. Injuries have been impacting his career, and we have not seen the full effect of him really since his freshman season. But it was beautiful. He broke out early. Broke out in his first game with that huge touchdown when he caught that. With a huge catch and run for a score. When he first initially broke out as a freshman. Injuries kept him in and out of the lineup. Looked good last week. Had some runs where he showed explosiveness and some pop. Can run between the tackles a little bit. But really it's when he sees space. You see the explosion. You see the burst. You see the speed. He's got some pop behind the pads once he gets the full clip. He's a guy you want to keep an eye on. And when you look at this whole spectrum of running backs here, Trevion Henderson's one of the top guys. And that's due to that size adjusted athleticism. Braylon Allen, he's dealing with some injuries right now, slowing him down a bit, but honestly, he has a good resume coming out of the college level, should be an earlier draft pick, day two guy, has been very productive throughout his career, 19 100-yard games, your typical Wisconsin running back who runs between the tackles, who's powerful, doesn't have many catches on his resume, has 25 so far this year, looking solid, but slowed down a little bit this year due to injuries. A bigger running back. He's also very young as well. So that's good for the tread on the tires considering he's gotten a lot of work. But has been productive. Can be that hammer looking for a nail on your team. And can be a guy that could deliver some fancy results. At the 107, not the 106, Roma Dunze from Washington and very productive this year he's been lights out he's another wide receiver who's just a highlight reel waiting to happen in this game after game after game really having a good 2023 season here really putting it together going to be a first round pick he's going to be a first rounder in rookie drafts too he's a guy that when people look at the tape here when people start to study him here in the offseason they're going to talk about him a lot there's going to be a lot of people in love with Romo Dunze he's a guy where I can't wait to see who he lands with who's going to be throwing him the rock because he is an explosive playmaker can get downfield can be a guy that can set your team apart. So at the 108, not the 107, we got Keon Coleman. Tremendous ball skills. Stepped up his game here at Florida State. Has been lights out. Production has been a little bit up and down, but you got size. You got sticky hands. You got a guy who's more than likely going to get drafted in the first round. I think in a lot of rookie drafts, he's going a little bit higher than the 107 right now. He's got a fan base in the Debbie community. He sure does. And I think in a lot of rookie drafts, especially in one QB, two QB a little bit different because the wide receivers are diluted down due to the quarterbacks. But 107 seems like it's kind of a deal considering the buzz surrounded by him, especially a few weeks ago. Keon Coleman's got a lot of upside. like to see where he goes in the draft. I think I'm going to say that about a lot of players, probably because we're in November here. And we're watching these games live, and we need to go over the tape a little bit more. But Sticky Hands, contested catch machine, can make those big plays. Huge playmaker, really coming around during that junior season. At Michigan State, had some good plays as well. Fun player to watch there. Go back and look at that tape. Keon Coleman, though, coming into his own in 2023. So 109, not 108, so we might have an extra pick here, but I like talking ball. Xavier Worthy, speed demon, can stretch the field, going to add a new dynamic to your team, could be a first rounder here, probably will once the combine is done, probably going to get a lot of talk in the offseason here. 
once we start looking at these prospects, this is a very good wide receiver class. Depending on draft capital, depending on where he goes, I can see him going a little bit higher. I can see him being slept on as well. That speed could separate him from the pack, not just from DBs, but in this draft class as well, especially if he goes to a good landing spot. Production is there, broke out as a freshman. That is something you want to see. Had some up and down quarterback play due to injuries throughout his career. That's something you want to note. But steady production, steady tape. We know how he projects at the NFL level as a speedster. Gets you yak, gets you yards after the catch, and can stretch the field. So now we're looking at the 110, 109, whatever you want to call it by now. But Troy Franklin, we got some size here. Another player who gets downfield and can make plays happen, can stretch out while the ball's in the air, while contested with them sticky hands, and all of a sudden you look up at the box score, he's rung up 100 yards on you. You look on Twitter, you see the highlights, there's Troy Franklin bringing in another score, and that's what he does. Those Pac-12 after dark games, Troy Franklin getting it done, and he's a player that could rise the rankings this offseason. I definitely could see that. I could see him being higher than this at the 109. People love their taller wide receivers. They love their Ranger wide receivers, especially nowadays when the smaller wide receivers have been hitting, the smaller wide receivers who create separation, who have that burst, but people love them, some bigger wide receivers with that tallness, that range. Franklin has that. He's got ball skills. We have a little bit of everything in this wide receiver class. We got some tall guys. We got some shorter guys. We got some burners. We got some separators. And they're all good. So we're going to have a lot of prospect profiles to argue about this spring. That's the best part about that. Troy Franklin getting it done. Can't wait to see what he does while he's finishing out his season here. At 110, 111, Raheem Rocket Sanders. I'll say this. I like his 2022 tape better than what we're seeing here in 2023. Coming back from injuries, injuries is really impacting his junior season right now. If I was him, I might stay another year because running backs aren't being valued anyways. I see he's got a deal with some mayonnaise or something on TikTok. Might be getting some money from that. I might stay another year considering how things are going. I wouldn't jump out to the draft unless I get a good note, Sam, getting some draft capital. But knowing how running backs are being valued here, you may want to play the market a little bit. But think about Raheem Sanders, though. Going into this season, he might have been the RB1 for a lot of people. RB1, RB2, because of that size. Big, thick running back. Decent size adjusts athleticism. He's not a burner or anything like that. He doesn't have like tremendous pop off the step. But he's got enough juice in his legs that when he's going, when he hits that full clip, you got to make a decision. He moves laterally well for his size, decent in the open field for back his size. He gets it done. He gets downhill, and he's a guy that can lay the wood too, and he can really do a little bit of everything. So I really want him to get more healthy. I really want him to get back to full speed. I really want him to play him like he was back in 2022. I really want to see all that. Even during his freshman year, we had some good highlights, some good clips from him. Go check his tape from back then. Don't just look at his 2023 tape. That will be a mistake. It might be a mistake to lay down and rely on the 2022 tape because we've done that with prospects before looking at their older tape and be like, maybe they can come back. But watch it all. Watch it all because Sanders is a dude. Now we're looking at Blake Corum at the 112, but we're probably going to have an extra pick, which is cool. Blake Corum has been very productive with the Michigan Wolverines. 2021, almost 1,000 yards, went off last year, then had the knee injury, comes back this year, has been productive, not like he was in 2022, but still getting the job done. And he's another player you look up on Saturdays. You look at the highlights. He's got something there for Michigan. He's got steady vision, moves laterally well, very patient, can do a little bit of everything because he can lay the wood, he can run between the tackles, he can get outside a little bit, not much in receiving production, but you can see how he could be used at the NFL level. Solid running back, decent size. You watch him on tape and you got to watch him closely because that maize and blue uniform Makes him look a little bit smaller, but this guy's a workout warrior. He's a hoss. He's got thick legs. Once you get a close-up on him, he's thicker than expected. He's more like a bowling ball build 
once you get a good look at him. And when he gets downfield, he's got good vision. Feels everything around him very well as well. The momentum of all the, the linebackers, the D-line, the DBs. Really makes good cuts. Has good anticipation, but can also drive it downfield as well. Fun running back prospect to watch. Older running back considering we got four years on his career. But still, it's all about how the NFL will value him. Our last pick here, Trey Benson. Very interesting collegiate profile. The production isn't grandiose, but we transferred to Florida State. We went off initially there with 990 yards and 9 touchdowns. You're making it happen with what you got here, and then you come back this year, and you're productive. Already 10 touchdowns on the season. One thing we can note on tape, he's got some thickness. He's got some size to him. And then on top of that, we got Pop on the step. He sees the hole. He gets through it. And then he runs through a face. He runs through you and runs around you. And he is a guy that's more explosive than what your eyes see. Because you got to really watch him on multiple series to get the full effect of Trey Benson. He could be a lead back for an NFL team. When it comes to this running back draft class, it's not very strong. It does not lean heavy on those top end running back characteristics that we see in a lot of other classes. But we got a mixed bag. You're going to see a lot of people hate on this running back class, and I understand it. But there's a lot of jabroni running backs like Trey Benson and a lot of other guys here that has some characteristics in their game that when you insert them into an NFL team, they start rolling with some opportunities. You could see them being productive and fancy. Draft capital might be there as in he could be in day two somewhere or early day three. Really got to pay attention to that. Really hard to guess these days because of how the NFL values running backs. Pay attention to him though because he's a bowling ball with jet fuel. Once he gets going in the hole, it's a business decision and you got to keep up with him. He'll get you those yards after contact. He'll blow through your face He'll get you those extra yards, get you more than expected. Trey Benson, damn good runner. So there we have it. We have a one round, one QB rookie mock draft with an extra pick helping you guys out. And I love talking ball on these players, talking values. We're going to be doing that all off season long too. We're going to be talking about these players. There are probably somebody that they did not draft. And I know that. I know that. But guess what? That's why there's a comment section talk about them down there i'll chirp back at you but you also got to hit that subscribe button stop missing out because i'm going to help you draft them rookie drafts to build your dynasty teams hit that subscribe button stop missing out but i want to thank you for watching i'll catch you on the next video